Yeah, hi everyone, my name's Liam Harney. Um, so I currently work for, well now work at the Young Foundation um, with Emily, but before that I was um, Community Engagement Manager with a big local area in East London. Um, so the Big Local is a national programme um, funded by the Lottery um, and it's a community development programme. Effectively the Lottery is given 150 areas across England a million pounds each and uh, the challenge really is for residents of those areas to come together and um, form a partnership to decide how to how to use that money to benefit their community. Um, so I'm hoping there's some lessons from that approach to community engagement um, and from my own experiences in trying to do that on the ground that might be useful for you. Um, so yeah, so as I said, Big Local is a national program. Um, each area has 10 years to spend their money before it gets taken away. Um, and it's it's deliberately long term. Um, it's also deliberately um, sort of very low strings attached to the funding. Um, the way it works is that uh, the money is held by a national charity called the Local Trust. Um, partnerships of residents form in big local areas and they create a plan which draws down chunks of that funding every few years um, and they nominate a local charity or organisation to hold that money on their behalf. Um, the idea behind the programme it really is to build the capacity of communities to address local needs and take ownership over their area. Um, so it really is like a bottom-up approach to community development. Um, and community engagement. Um, as such, across the England, um, different areas are doing different things. Um, there's different takes on how to use that money, um, and it's all driven locally. So um, I was I worked for Aberfeldy Big Local for about three and a half years. Uh, Aberfeldy is um, is in a state uh, located in Poplar in East London. It's probably about a 10 minute walk from Canary Wharf, um, but it is a completely different world. Um, it's probably home to around about 8,000 people. It's got a diverse population. It's got a rapidly changing population as well. Um, there's high levels of income deprivation, high levels of uh, health deprivation, and the area is also being regenerated uh, in quite a big way of part, as part of the Mayor of London's um, development opportunity areas. So it's um, a really interesting place to work. Uh, there's lots of challenges. There's also lots of really interesting and lovely people there as well. Um, but I would say um, for many people, Aberfeldy feels like a bit of a forgotten area. Um, for, for many, it feels like the area has been allowed to decline over a number of decades. Um, and that is now being transformed by from the sort of top down really by outside agencies and developers. Um, that's the context. So uh, Aberfeldy was chosen as one of the big local areas. Um, there's a partnership of local residents. Um, they meet monthly to effectively direct the program, make decisions around spending. They employ um, staff members to support their plans and, and deliver their activities um, and they develop their priorities and activities from the community so in consultation with the community um, so as i said i was i was there for about three and a half years so i was working to help set some of this stuff up so i mean during the time i was there um, we were able to do a number of really fun and valuable things so um we set up a resident run youth club that filled a gap that was left by the um withdrawal of a council run service we established i think is a better word a new community pub uh, on the estate called the tommy flowers which is named after a former resident uh, who was um actually a colleague of alan turing's and involved in the in Bletchley park park and code breaking during world war ii um, we, uh, we influenced um, regeneration plans in the area and tried to hold the developers to account. We opened a new boxing gym on the same, uh, on the estate as well. That was resident uh, run. We funded a range of 
quite small scale community projects. Um, some of that was supporting uh, local people who have business ideas as well. Uh, we also got involved in trying to redesign uh, the local parks as well, make improvements. Um, so it's really broad. We were able to do lots of different things. Um, and I think that that was probably because big local really takes a place-based approach. So rather than starting with a particular issue, um, you start with an area and you get to know people in that area and you identify um, what passions people have, what interests people have and what issues there are um, and try and take action to, to do some of that. Um, in terms of the different approaches that we used whilst I was there in terms of how we engaged the community and got people involved, um, we did a number of things. So we had the resident uh, partnership. Um, that was the sort of main decision making body for the programme. Um, there's an interesting story there. That when, when I came into that partnership, uh, it, as it's such a long program, there's sort of ebbs and flows in, in participation locally. It was on a bit of a, a sort of lull um, when I started. Um, there were some trust issues with um, a local housing association who were involved in the partnership. Um, a member of the of Tower Hamlets Council was also involved in the partnership. And there was a sense that the program didn't feel resident owned and that people were invited along to the meetings but were there to sort of make up the numbers and it still very much felt like it was a um, local authority sort of third sector sort of um, project uh, which we changed which we changed so now the partnership is purely um, has purely just residents involved on it um, we collaborated with local organisations and this is like really local organisations. So um, we had representation on the partnership from the local church, uh, the local football team as well. They were involved really heavily and took the lead on a lot of, um, a lot of activity locally too. Um, we had the uh, shopkeeper, we had the guy who ran the local Londis corner shop involved in the partnership too. And this was really about trying to embed the um, embed the activities and embed the sort of decision making in the local community and in people who were connected locally as well. Um, we did a number of sort of like events and ongoing um, ongoing events that engaged wider members of the community. So these included uh, community meals which were quarterly. These were a way of making sure that what we were doing it, it allowed people to check up on us and, and for us to sort of like check in with people. So there was a sort of constant sort of cycle of feedback. Um, we had a community chess fund where we uh, we gave out small grants um, of £500 to local people who wanted to try stuff, uh, try activities locally. So this was all about giving people a small amount of resource to take a risk and start running stuff. Um, so this covered stuff like exercise classes, bingo groups, trips out, um, all stuff like that. It just gave people something to focus on. Um, and that, that idea of taking action was really important. That it, often it can be best to engage people through action rather than through talking. Um, we did larger events which we incorporate some consultation into such like summer fun days christmas events um we did a bit of peer research where we employed local residents to do some consultation that was around the parks uh, of course we had uh, we had staff members who were, were going out connecting people building relationships um and i think as well we in creating some of these new spaces like the boxing club and the pub um we were making we were sort of creating a bit of a social infrastructure that allowed allowed me as a staff member to meet more people, but it also just allowed the community to connect more as well. And that was something that was really important for Aberfeldby, where that um, those meeting places were quite lacking. Um, in terms of lessons learned, uh, these are just a few reflections I had when I was thinking yesterday. Um, some of them have come up actually already, but um, it does. It takes time to build relationships with people, um, and to establish honest communication. So I'd, I'd actually worked. I'd been at a university before doing this job, and had done some um, community-based research projects. 
um, and it was different. Go, so I was coming in as an outsider. It, it, it took quite a while to get that trust with people um, and then for people to communicate honestly about stuff. Um, it also takes time to build rep a reputation. So there is a lot of um, cynicism sometimes about some of this stuff. Um, and you need to sort of prove to people your worth often. Um, actions can speak louder than words. Um, again, that was just, we found it much more um, effective to engage people through doing things. Um, so giving people the opportunities to, to take the lead on activities um, in the community. Uh, that was a really good way of building relationships and sort of moving things forward and building a bit of momentum. I think this is probably true of a lot of communities, but I think definitely in East London, where there's sort of constant change, constant development, um, people are quite tired of consultation and talking and, and stuff like that. And people do feel um, that, done, that things are done to them, not with them or for them. Um, so we were trying to sort of address that by almost supporting people to do things for themselves and with each other. Um, another lesson is that there is a, there's a huge amount of untapped talent and ideas within communities um, from people you would perhaps least expect it from. Um, most of our activities were led by local people um, and we were really lucky with the big local uh, funding was that um, because there are so few strings attached, we could support people who wouldn't normally access funding. They wouldn't have the uh, skills to fill in funding application forms. Um, they wouldn't necessarily, uh, the, the idea of perhaps filling in a risk assessment to do an activity would just put them off straight away from putting something on. Um, we were able to support that, um, work through those sort of things with them and be a bit flexible. Um, and that led to some really good, uh, really good stuff in tea. So one resident um, applied to our community chess grant, uh, got five hundred pounds to start doing boxing club, uh, boxing lessons on the estate. Um, he did these initially in a community centre, um, and then when that that sort of closed um, early on last year because of COVID, he sort of moved a bit of that out onto uh, the local green. Eventually, we were able to, to fund him to, to set up a, this boxing gym uh, in a disused shop on the local high street. Um, there was, but there's loads of stories about local people who've just got stuff they want to do, and we were able to support that and sort of grow that. Um, and I suppose the final thing is to just reflect on um, the sort of local power dynamics that come within communities. So obviously, this was like quite a, a really local approach to involving people. Um, and I would just say, don't assume that um, local institutions always represent people's interests. There's a lot of, there's, I mean, there's a lot of stuff that goes on in any area, and um, definitely in Aberfeldy, there was a, it, certain organisations would claim to represent people, um, but actually you spoke to people, and that wasn't the case. And I feel there's a lesson there about. Um, it's important to engage with local authorities and larger institutions, but um, the more sort of local you get, the, the sort of different stories come up and, and, and different um, perspectives. But yeah, so um, that was quite a sort of whistle stop uh, tour of my role over sort of three and a half years, but um, gladly answer any questions and interested to hear what people have got to say and how this, how this could relate to um, the university context as well. Mm. Do, you, do you have any sort of thoughts immediately about where you see those connections? Yeah, so I'm aware of a few uh, universities that have taken like a quite local place-based approach to community engagement. I think the Montford University did it with the Square Mile programme mm. and Cardiff University do it. Um, they've got a programme called Community Gateway where they've partnered with a one neighbourhood in Cardiff. Um, there's definitely lessons. I think the idea of um, a resident resident led steering group or a resident heavy steering group and investing in the relationships to bring people on board and that and giving people proper decision making power. I don't know money is tight for this sort of stuff, but if there's money that can 
can be used as sort of grants within the community that can seed fund activity. It's a really good way of, firstly, it shows that university is willing to invest something financially. Uh, secondly, it gives those residents involved on the steering group um, the ability to to do what you know to actually take action and, and fund things they want to do, and it's a great way of then potentially linking up university and community um, people together in those projects. Um, I would say that really works, and it, it it sort of you approach it less from an issue based perspective. How do we solve this issue? more from an opportunity based perspective like here's an opportunity to do things in your community with the funding and, and support and then you sort of see what comes from that and through that i think you can build some really uh, good relationships and also people develop the skills and connections that are really vital to sort of civic work civic activity as well great uh, can i just ask one other thing sorry uh, it's just something that you said that made me think and it's something other people have reflected on which is on the one hand it's really important to build really sort of trusting and deep relationships and to make people feel really invested in in you as an individual or as an organization but the risk then is is that you kind of get captured by just certain relationships with certain groups and you know what do you do about the risk that that then creates of, of you only working with certain people and being quite exclusive how do you balance that with actually wanting to be really open and to when you've got limited resources how on earth do you do you manage that it's really difficult uh, i think it, you, i think you need to be constantly reflecting on it and constantly working out who you're not engaging with um it, you need to have quite clear processes in a sense um to sort of guard against the fact that you, that you don't want the same people coming back and, and sort of constantly getting the benefits of something. Um, but I think really it, it just it takes that commitment to to constantly trying to build new relationships and branch out and uh, engage different groups and different people. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, really horrible question. <laughs> it's, it's, um, yeah, I think it's a real challenge, isn't it? Because you don't want to drop people and kind of move on because that sends all the wrong signals. But at the same time, if you don't, and you've got really limited resources, then you're caught in a really tough place, I think. Yeah. But Emily, any any thoughts and reactions? And again, please use the chat. We're sort of coming coming to the end of the session fairly soon. So it's been a, a fantastic sort of array of different presentations. I just wondered, Emily, what you've sort of taken from across the three. Well, I, I would thank you so much, um, Liam. And thanks again, Nick, as well, and Dan, if, if he's still with us too. I think what we really wanted to, to try and draw out, and I think the three speakers have done this absolutely brilliantly, is, is there are so many different ways where community engagement can form a part of your um, university life. Um, and we've aimed to really kind of give some very practical, tangible examples and some that I hope are perhaps, you know, sort of ones that may not have been, you know, come across before. I think um, it's often interesting, I find, thinking about Liam's example, how we can challenge ourselves about what is the scope of activities a university can support. You know, the idea that maybe a boxing gym um, that even could become perhaps a shared student community space, for example, could be a meaningful investment to build trust. You know, that's not something that would necessarily immediately come to mind but actually could be absolutely brilliant and a wonderful gateway to strengthen mm -hmm. the relationship. Um, equally, you know, Nick's point, connecting on an issue that um, has real heart and meaning for people, such as poverty or hardship in the local community and making it a conversation where you're not necessarily just using it for research purposes, you're just saying that you care and that you also recognise this as a community um you know that the university is part of you know it, it sort of makes you challenge kind of do we need always to have you know end goals in sight from the start do we need to have such a as kind of structured program or can we be led by you know the surprising and the positive and the collaborative nature of how community engagement can work and then i think just going back to dan's point i think that really important thing around thinking about symbolism and thinking about kind of how you you frame community engagement and and you know that also draws on Liam's point sometimes doing it through actions or doing it through you know being the best town hall or being 
you know sort of saying actually we, we want to just do a small grants program you know we're going to put investment and trust in communities to know what perhaps ought to be done with the university that can be the most powerful way and it doesn't have to be framed as here we are consulting or here we are engaged be framed as joint action so i think those are kind of three points but i i can see that people have taken a huge amount in the chat and thank you all to all of you for such brilliant um you know thought-provoking reflections and and questions as well for the speakers as well thank you